Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. So tonight we're going to talk about Temp Towers. What are they? Where do they come from? Do they mean us harm? And most importantly, how do we use them to get the best results out of our prints? And I'll tell you who did this awesome character illustration. Alright, let's get to it. So if you go to Thingiverse and put in Temp Tower, you'll find a ton of different options. If you refine it by popular, these two will pop up. And they're a pretty good idea of the two different types of tests that you can use here. This one's a little bit more straightforward and it will mostly just tell you the temp. This one over here gives you a ton of different options as far as what it tests. The nice thing about the process that I'm gonna show you is that it'll work on any Temp Tower you find. So we're gonna focus on this one just because it's a little easier, but I will give you some numbers for this one just in case you guys wanna use it. So this is one of the most popular temp towers out there, and for good reason, it's a simple print that gives you a good idea of what temperature will be best for each type of filament on your printer. And as always, whether you use this model or a different one, please consider tipping the creator. It's a really great way to give back to them and say thank you for creating something that has really helped this community. So click on thing files, and then scroll down and find the test that's going to match whatever type of filament you are using. I typically print with PLA, so this is the one that I use. It starts at 2.30 and then works its way down to 1.90. So go ahead and download this one just so you can follow along. And if you scroll down a little further, you'll see some G-codes down here. These are all tests that have been sliced and they're ready for printing. So you could absolutely download these, put it onto your card, and then put it into your printer. However, I wanna give you guys a word of caution. I've never had an issue with this G-code. It's actually printed really well for me multiple times on different printers, but some people have told me that they've had issues where something weird will happen, like the nozzle will slam into the bed. So if you guys use these tests that are already sliced and ready to go, just be mindful that that is a risk. Last thing you wanna do before leaving this page is you wanna to go to Thing Details and you wanna see if there's any specific information from the creator about how to print this model. All right, so go ahead and bring the model into Cura. So programming these temp towers is actually pretty easy. The most important thing you have to figure out is how many layers there are between each part of the test. And that's actually a pretty easy process. This model is particularly easy. Some models might be a little bit more finicky. You'll have to play around with them a little bit, but basically all you have to do is figure out the size of the base and then the total height, and you can use those two numbers to find your value. So if you start scrolling down on the layer view, what you're looking for is the last layer of the base and the first layer of the test which on this model is a pretty clear and easy to see difference that the base stops at four and the model starts at five. So that tells us that the size of our base is gonna be four layers and our total height is 310. So from here, we're gonna get into some math. It is simple math, but if you're like me and you don't like math, whether it's simple or not, you can just plug in the numbers that I'm gonna tell you and you don't have to worry about this. However, I wanna make sure that I give you guys all the information you need to be able to apply this process to whatever temp tower you wanna use. So if we subtract the height of our base, which is 4, away from the total height of our model, which is 310, we'll end up with 306. Then from there, we're going to divide that by the total number of blocks we have in this test. So here we have 9, not unlike the 9 layers of hell, which of course comes out to be 36. No, I'm just kidding, it's 34. And if you want to check your numbers to confirm that you're correct, all you have to do is add the size that you figured out the base was to the size that you figured out one of these blocks are. So I know that my base was 4 and that the block was 34, so 38 should bring us to the top of the first block. And there you go. Now if I add another 34, it brings us up to the top of the next part. So now that we have all of our numbers, we can program our test. Now programming this is actually pretty easy. You're just going to go to Extensions, Post Processing, Modify G-Code. And I usually move this window out of the way just in case I forget how many blocks there are in my test. So you're going to hit add script, then you're going to go to change at Z. Once you add that, a few different settings are going to pop up. First thing we want to do is change the trigger to layer number instead of height. Now, since this is our first script, that's going to refer to the first part of this test. We're going to leave that at one. Now, the last thing we're going to do is come down to where it says change E. Make sure you get to the one that says one. And again, this is going to correspond to the first part of our test, so we want to make this 230, because that's where the test starts. And now we're going to add another script and do more or less the same thing. Only this time, instead of setting the layer height to 1, we're going to set it to 38, because we know that's where the second part of this test starts. Then we're going to move down and change the nozzle temp to 225. And that's pretty much it, guys. You're going to add a script for each one of these layers. So you can see here that I have nine scripts added. That's one for each level of this test. 
So from here, what I do to make sure that my settings are correct is I will keep an eye on the change layer value and I'll just keep clicking on down through watching that. Then once I get to the bottom, after I've confirmed that those are all set to the correct layer height, I will work my way backwards watching the temperature. So you can see I'll go up from 190 all the way up to 230 in five degree increments. All right, that's all there is to it. Just slice this and save the file. And I do mean save that file because you're gonna wanna print this multiple times. And that's where we come to why this test is important. So you're definitely gonna wanna print this test every time you put a new type of filament onto your printer. And that does include different colors of the same type that you already been using because different colors can actually require a slightly different temperature. Then once you have this file sliced and saved, make sure you get rid of all of these. So now I want to give a quick shout out to Edward Gonzalez. He made this awesome character illustration for me. It was totally custom. It's actually based off of one of my first ever NPCs. I'll tell you guys about him sometime, but suffice it to say, he was really, really popular in my group, and I was excited about making this come to life, and he did an amazing job with it. So definitely reach out to him, and I recommend you guys check out his Patreon as well. You can of course find his Patreon linked below, or by searching for Omega Modelos. His models are absolutely stunning, and he does release pre-supported versions as well. But the best part of all, his Patreons get to vote on what the theme for next month is going to be. So you definitely get to feel like you're involved in the process. All around, a great guy, awesome work, both in his art and his Patreon. I definitely recommend you guys check him out. Alright, so hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, I ask that you please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps the channel grow, which helps me keep making these videos. And as always, if you guys have any questions about 3D printing or tabletop gaming, definitely jump onto the Facebook group. Alright, now let's go print something.